Rise, folks. Good afternoon. Wow. How do you, uh, what a good morning. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Our God. Our God. Well, last week, we heard from Minister Jerry regarding a miracle, the miracle of the feeding of 5,000. Yeah. Didn't you do a great job? So Minister Jerry is, um, he and his wife, Janisha, they, they oversee our ministry to Coastal Carolina University because God has called us here to Myrtle Beach to build a Christ-centered, socially responsible church and campus ministry here in Horry County. And to see the young people, I, I, I know Mac doesn't look like it, but he's a teenager. I mean, that, that's enough for you to worship. Amen. Enough of our teenagers are being lost. Amen. Enough of our young men are being lost. Because they don't have the truth of God working and moving in their lives. And we, the church, we, we haven't done the best job, but we're going to get better. Amen. And we're, go we're going to do this thing. We're going to see the generations changed and impacted for the kingdom of God. You just got to witness a little bit of that. Yes. Yes. That, was, that was powerful. Yes, it was. Thank you. And so Jerry talked about what God is able to do with five loaves and two fish. Today, we're going to talk about, we're going to continue in that series talking about miracles dealing with darkness. Dealing with darkness. See, we've all been there. Now, our... Scripture is going to come from John chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. Please go ahead and find it in your Bibles or on your device. But we're also going to be jumping around as well. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the other gospel accounts of what took place in this moment. I'm going to read those, but I want you to understand that each one of the writers, whether it was Matthew, Mark, Luke or John, they were writing to a particular audience. And so there are some things in Scripture that John might explain that Matthew doesn't, or that Luke might highlight and Mark doesn't. In Matthew, when he's giving his gospel account, he's talking to Jewish people, the Hebrews. When Mark is talking, or communicating, he's talking to the Gentiles, those who aren't Jews. They don't understand the Jewish culture. They don't come from the Jewish culture. They're us. When Luke is communicating, he's talking to those who are intellectually minded. And he's giving a, a, an organized account of those who have witnessed the work of Christ. And then when John is communicating. He's talking about Jesus, the eternal God. And he wants you to understand who Jesus Christ actually is. Now, don't think that's strange, because a lot of people will pick up the Bible and they say, it's so confusing. I mean, this story says this, and, and yet it's, it says that, and, 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 and this witness says this, and, and, but he, he doesn't say what that witness says. Don't find that confusing. Because the natural man does the same thing. I mean, if you looked at my, my wife, Pastor D, and you said, Pastor D, how was your day? She said, she'll say, mm, God showed up. Mm-hmm. I got up this morning at 4 o'clock. I started praying, and God started speaking. And God said, do this. And God said, do that. And I saw miracles, and I saw things happen. And she'll go on and on and on. And on. <laughs> but then you'll come and you'll say, Pastor, Pastor Sean, <clears throat> how was your day? I say, good. <laughs> we both experienced the same day. 
but what I communicate is different than what the other one communicates. So don't find God's word strange. Because by the power of the Holy Spirit, these people wrote. The scriptures say it was God breathed. So when you're reading, don't look at it like it's a natural man. They were writing with a purpose. They were writing to a particular audience and they were writing for a particular purpose. Let's look at. Uh, let's begin by looking at uh, John chapter 6, sorry, verse 16. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, and after getting into a boat, they started across the sea to Capernaum. It had already become dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. In addition, the sea began to get rough because a strong wind was blowing. And then when they had rowed about 25 or 30 stadia. They saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. So they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. Let's look at Mark 6, 45 through 52. And immediately Jesus had his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of Bethsaida. Now, you might have caught the destination was different. No, it wasn't. It was the same region. It's really like no different than me saying that I'm in Myrtle Beach, but I'm in Conway. Right? It's the same thing. All right. So while he himself dismissed the crowd and after saying goodbye to them, he left for the mountain to pray. And when it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And seeing them, straining at the oars, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. And he intended to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought that it was a ghost. And they cried out, for they saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke with them and said to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And then he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped, and they were utterly astonished. For they had not gained insight from the incident of the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Now think about this. They're just coming out of a miracle. They just saw a miraculous thing happen. And then Jesus says, get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat. And then they're talking, did you see, did you, what happened? Did you see that? I mean, the bread, the fish, they just, stuff just kept happening. This is what they're pondering. As they're struggling in the midst of their circumstance, and we'll talk about that. Now let's jump over to Matthew 14, Matthew 14, 22 through 27. And immediately afterwards, after the feeding of the 5,000. He compelled the uh, disciples to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side. And while, he was, and while he sent the crowd away, after he sent the crowd away, he, um, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was, a, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the sea was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were terrified. And they said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter responded and said to him, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come out. And as I've said, we need to pull all of these accounts together to get a complete understanding of what's happening here. And I want to go back a little bit and just talk about this guy, Peter, who gets a lot of credit for stepping out of the boat into some difficult circumstances. You have to ask yourself a question. 
if what I'm stepping into is a storm, what in the world must be going on in that boat? It was better for him to get out of the boat than it was for him to stay there. <laughs> let, let, let's, let, let's talk. Can we talk for a minute? Pa- Pastor Dedell and I, we're, we're really not interested in preaching to you. Really not. We're interested in imparting a word of God that allows your life to change. This is the command of God. That we should preach this gospel. That we should make disciples. That we should baptize and then we should teach you how to obey God. We've all been in difficult circumstances. We've all been in a storm. We've all been in darkness. All of us. What are you going to do? So I needed to read those scriptures because I wanted you to understand. There weren't weren't headlights. There weren't ways for them to see. Yet Jesus compelled them, go get into the boat and go. Forget all of the religious movies that you've watched about various things concerning the Bible. It's better for you to read the Bible than it is for you to watch a movie. The Bible's going to tell you really what was going on. Now, a miraculous thing happened. The people began to celebrate. So much so that Jesus had to send them away. Do you know why? Because they were about to elevate him before his time. So the people, oh, you must be the Messiah. You must be the Messiah. We've seen this great thing that you've done. Let's elevate you now. Get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat. I'm going to pray. <laughs> oh, okay, get in the boat. We've done a great thing. This is, this is good for leadership development. Every time you preach well, And the people come, oh, you just did a great job. You just did a great job. You're just a good leader. You're so great. You're awesome. You're all that. Stop. Send them away and go pray. That way you're not building yourself up at a time when you shouldn't do that. It's not about you. It's really about God. And sometimes we forget. Because we've done such a great job. No, no, no. God used us to do a great thing. Well, here we go. We in this boat. Now, don't think it's strange because y'all all been there. They weren't there for five minutes. They were there for six to eight hours in the dark. Whoa. Don't think it's strange. Because you've been in your circumstance for years. You got a diagnosis. You got a situation. You got a circumstance. You've got a circumstance that you've been fighting. God, don't you see? Don't you see me striving here? Don't you see me? Aren't you going to help me? The disciples, the difference is from what they were doing and what we sometimes do is they were following the commands of God. They were right where they should have been. And they still had to struggle. What? So God have mercy on those who are doing their own thing. But what about when you're just trying to do the right thing? And it's a dark place. They're rowing. 
and, and the Sea of Galilee doesn't help them. The waves are fighting back. The winds are blowing. Man, I'm just trying to be a good man. I'm just trying to be a good mom. I'm just trying to be a good husband. I'm just trying to be a good wife. I'm just trying to be a good friend. I'm just trying to be a good believer. But the circumstances of life are smacking me in the face. Am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? God, don't you see it's dark? What am I going to do? I've been here fighting. And you tell people, you go to people and say, well, pray, do this, let's do it, let's, let's fast, let's, let's agree. I've done all that. Don't you think that they've done this stroke enough? We've been doing this for hours. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever done it, I, I was in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> and, 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 and being on a canoe looks cool. Being in a rowboat boat looks cool until you're in it. <laughs> I just can't wait to get out of this situation. You know, for those who are familiar with Virginia Beach area, they've got these hotels and they sit right on the beach. And, but they've got this like long boardwalk and it's beautiful. People walk the boardwalk and, and it's just, you know, from your room, you're just kind of looking down. You're looking over the Atlantic Ocean and you're kind of watching people just enjoying life. Well, they, they, they rent out these pedal cars. And so you, you climb in there with your whole family, <laughs> your family of six or eight, and then you're supposed to pedal down this boardwalk. <laughs> so so we're, we're, we're up in our room, and, and it looks really cool. Atlantic Ocean, boardwalk. Atlantic Ocean, boardwalk of my wife who loves the ocean. She says, wouldn't it be fun if we just got one of those cars, if we just went up and down the boardwalk? And as a good husband I, I am, I said, okay, dear. <laughs> we climb into the car, which is too small for me. So I squeeze my body in there, but as I'm trying to pedal, my knees are hitting the metal. <laughs> and then after a while, my, my, my wife is tired. So she's trying to help, but she's tired. My daughter's in the back too. She doesn't stop pedaling. <laughs> she gave up the ghost. So it's just me. And I said, this this is not, <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks a lot better <laughs> from up there, <laughs> but this is not fun. <laughs> we get ourselves in situations and circumstances, and we really didn't count the cost. Yeah. Yeah. So good. It's important for you to consider, because when you get into God's will, it, it is the safest place for you. Now, for the disciples, it didn't look like it. Man, is it dark. And we've been rowing, and we've been fighting the circumstances, the waves and the wind. And we just want to quit. So here comes Jesus. Now, in context, truly, the, the, the Jews didn't have a word for ghost. We did that. We, we added that to create some understanding for us. They had other words to, to account for, like, like words like epiphany. They, they saw something. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bright light. It, wasn't a, it, was, it, was that, it was that image moving across the water. And in their belief system, not just Jewish culture, but in the culture of the people in which they lived, they felt like if people had died in a given place, that sometimes spirits would be left behind. So 
you kind of don't really know what you're looking at. And how many of you know that these fishermen who are out on the water in the dark, some of them didn't know how to swim. Many of them didn't. They went out there because they had to. That was their livelihood. Imagine how many people drowned. Imagine how many boats sank. And then the storm comes. Now, the Sea of Galilee wasn't actually a sea. It was more like a lake. Lake being surrounded by land. Wasn't a lake that you could look across. For those of you who are familiar with the Chicago area, there's a, there's a lake there. <laughs> you can't see to the other side. It looks like a body, of, it looks like an ocean, it looks like a, a sea. G Galilee was kind of like that. So you're going out, you've heard of or you know of people who are dying out here. And then this situation happens. And then you see this image, you're not sure what it is, and you just know, wait a minute, are we going to die too? Are we about to die too? So Peter hops up, <laughs> Lord, if it's you, get me out of this over to where you are. So I'm not mad at him. I, I'm not sure that I, I wouldn't have done the same thing. And all I'm saying is that the situation in the boat, it wasn't that great. Now, how about your life? How about what you're trying to do? Now, Mac had no idea what we were talking about today, none. All he's trying to do is accomplish the will of God for his own life. And the circumstances say he can't do it. Now, what will you do? You got a phone call. Somebody passed. Somebody sick. You lost your job. Your bank account says you got more month than money. What are you going to do now? Are you going to believe God? Or are you going to allow your circumstances to dictate your response? You have to believe. Everybody say, I have to believe. I have to believe. I have to believe. They sang a song, He Won't Fail. Now, did, did I call y'all and tell y'all to sing that song? <laughs> I, I didn't. I had nothing to do with this. First, I've heard it. I've heard it. The Holy Spirit of God wants you to know today that He won't fail you. Amen. The situation, dire. Scary. Maybe I should sell my house. Maybe I should move. Maybe I should sell my business. Maybe I should quit. Maybe I should drop out of school. Maybe I should get a divorce. Maybe I should kick that kid out of my house. Maybe I should. He won't fail you. No, he won't. That does not mean that what you're enduring doesn't have a requirement of you. The requirement is that you understand that he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That he is. The interesting thing about it is usually when God is talking and he's introducing himself to us, he says, I am. I am. Meaning I'm the ever-present, all-existing one. In this case, he says, shh, don't be afraid. It is I. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst of your struggle, yeah. in the midst of your difficulty, in the middle of giving up. By the way, they were in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, in the very middle. 
in the dark. Ah, God. It is I. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. My exhortation to you today is in the middle of your circumstance, in the dark moment, find God. Look for him. He's right there. He's right there. And before I forget to say this, as soon as they recognized him and invited him into their situation, they were right where they needed to be. Now, they had been struggling. As soon as they said, Now, I can't leave this account of the scriptures without sharing something and confessing my own fault. I have a, I have a bride who loves to pray. I mean, she loves it. She's been getting up before Jesus. <laughs> Every morning for over 20 years. And so this week I had to apologize. Because I used to tease her. I used to say that very thing. I don't know why you're getting up. Jesus is not even up yet. <laughs> and it's a joke. We all know that our God. We all know our God. But it's interesting that Jesus went to pray in the fourth hour. Now there are eight watches but in the fourth watch is when this thing happened now the fourth watch is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Wow. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. now you we're, we're looking for a miracle right I encourage you get up out of your bed in the fourth watch. You need God to do something. You meet him in the fourth watch. See what happens. Now you could say I'm tired. Oh I worked all day. Oh I was up all night. I dare you. Meet him. Watch and see what he does. See in the fourth watch. The children of Israel were delivered from bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you, don't look at the movie. It was the fourth watch where God brought them through. You want to find the miraculous? You want to find the supernatural? And in my reading and in my studying, it was interesting that some, <coughs> some leaders of the Jewish faith believe like this that two hours before sunrise they're looking for a miracle so they get up to find a miracle will you get up to find a miracle will you get up to meet God in a moment Friday night, I was up in the fourth watch. Last night, I was up in the fourth watch, and I was praying. And situations today started happening, and I'm like, okay, okay. But I'm not going to let what's going on around me impact that moment, because I know God's going to do something. I don't quite know what he's going to do. Yeah. I just know he's going to do something yeah. that's going to relieve my situation and my circumstance. Glory. He's going to give this church a breakthrough. Yeah. I was praying. 
in the fourth watch for all of you. I said, Heavenly Father, I don't know who, I don't even know who will be there tomorrow. But I'm up and I'm asking. Would you move in the life of your people? And you've been waiting. You've been in the darkness. And you've been rowing. And you've been working. And you've been wondering, God, do you hear me? The circumstance. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. So I'm going to say to you, don't be afraid. Have courage. That in the midst of your circumstance, you have courage. Knowing I'm in the will of God. Is it the will of God for you to be here? Yes. Is it the will of God for you to help us to build this church for his glory? Have courage. I didn't say it was easy. And then find Christ. Because when you do, you're at the very end of where you set out to be. You'll sow in tears. You'll reap in joy. Weeping, it'll endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. At the end of the fourth watch, you can expect joy. At the end of what Jesus wants to do in you, there's joy. You can praise him for it. Thank you. Family, don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you sell out. Don't you bail out. Don't you turn back. Don't you quit. Let's do it together. It is the Christ. He wants to do it in you. He can't change this community with just Pastor Sean and Pastor Donnell. He can't do it. We can't live forever. We got to go. We've got to go. But he's left us a remnant. I say, let me, let me have it, Uncle. Let me do it. Uncle, you don't have to roll. Let me take that. So I have an exhortation for you who know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior I say thank you my brother and sister we can do this together he won't fail us but if you have been there where you've gotten the diagnosis where you've been there where you've wanted to quit where you've wanted to step out of your circumstance, knowing what God has told you to do, but it's been just so frightening. It's been so difficult. You know you should be serving. You know you should be using your gift. You know you should be winning people to the kingdom, but the circumstances have made it so difficult for you. And you just want to say, God, I'm sorry. I hear you today. It is you that I hear. I will answer you. If that's you, 
Let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me. I've prayed to you over and over and over. And I could not see, for it was so dark. My arms got weary, my body got weary, my mind got weary. I wanted to quit. I'm sorry. But today I see you. I will not be afraid. Thank you for speaking to me today inspiring me today I'm forever changed because of your great love I give you glory I give you thanks in Jesus name Amen. and if you're here or you're online and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior this is your moment you don't want to be doing life by yourself. There is nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. That will separate you from the love of God. There is no sin. Well, you say, Pastor, you don't know me. You don't know what I've done. I don't need to know. But God knows. And he's right here for you ready to forgive all that you've done that you feel like is going to hinder me. He says, no. Come to him now. So as I pray this prayer and you pray with me, I'm going to ask our prayer team to come. Just a couple of people, just to come up and be ready for you. That if you need anything at all, the folks that will be up here with the lanyards on are here to pray with you and believe God for you and for your future. So pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that the separation between us is because of my sin. I confess that I've sinned and fallen far short of your glory. I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead. I'm sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive and cleanse me. I want to turn away from everything the Bible calls sin and receive you, Jesus, as my Lord, and my Master, and Savior. Help me to love, serve, and obey you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, you just received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Congratulations. The angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner who will repent. We have a gift for you. We want to give you this. And we want to help you in the next steps to get to where exactly God has called and created you to be. Thank you, family, for listening. Have a great day. Have a great week ahead. God bless you.